Internationalization has never been this easy with Next.js. For this, I'm going to show you how you can use the Next Internationalization Library to support multiple languages in your application. So for demonstration purposes, I have this basic landing page. We have this title, we have this accelerate your progress, we have this introductory paragraph, and then some featured items. And we also have this date here, which says last updated, January 5, 2024. And finally, we have the newsletter section. So there are a couple of things to note here. We are dynamically rendering these featured items. So we will learn how to do that with this library. And we're also rendering a date. So we will see how we can use the ICU standard to provide these formats all across every single language. So I bootstrapped an application using the T3 stack. So this is a Next.js 14 project. We have the layout and the root page. Here in the page, we're rendering the product section and then the newsletter. In the product section, we have this array featured items, which contains icon, title, and then description. And then we dynamically render them here in this unordered list, which is this one. So a list item, we get the icon, we apply some classes, and then we have the span. So again, this is for each of these featured items. And then we have this new date, and then we use to local date string, and then we do not define the local, and then we pass in these options. So it's pretty much a medium format for the date. And as for the newsletter, we just have some tags here. So paragraph, the heading, the label, the button label, and we have this extra information. So nothing too fancy here. So with this, let's start implementing the internationalization. So I'll come here over to the official page, come here to app router, and then they tell you to npm install next Intel. So I'll copy this. And since I'm using yarn, I'll say yarn add and then next Intel. And once we have this, we can move on. So they tell you, to use the setup. So state the messages to be in source, which is a folder, and then you can add the JSON files for the locals. So let's do that. I'll come here and here in the root, I'll create a directory messages. And then for now, we're just going to have English. So n.json, and we can start adding things here. So we can say test, this is a test. And with this, we now need to come here over to the next configuration file and add this with next Intel. So I'll come here to the next.config.js and I'm going to say const next Intel config is equal to with next Intel. And then we can say export default next Intel config and we pass in the base config. So you can add things here. That way you do not lose the base configuration that you provide to Next.js. So having done this, we need to restart the server. But before doing that, let us finish installing this. So we must create this file at the root of the source. So i18n.ts. So I'll come here over to the source and then new file .ts, and then I'll just copy this and paste it here. Now here they are asserting this to be anything, but I prefer to be more type safe. And not only this, but they are strictly checking for these locals. That means that if there is any local that extends from one of these base locals, it is not going to work, at least not from what I tested. So you need to get the base one. So what I mean is, let's say we have English and Spanish. And for Spanish, you may have S or you may have S and then 419 
etc. For Mexico, for US, for Argentina, the list is endless. So to make sure that this one will be mapping over to whatever of these sub locales, we can say const base local is equal to new intel. And this doesn't come from the library. This is native to the language. We can say local, we pass in the local, and then we can access the base name. So as we can see, returns a substring of the locals string representation containing core information about this local. That way we can now map to these ones in every single case. So we can say if it doesn't include the base local, we can return not found. So now we can save this and we can move on to the fourth one. So create the middleware. So for this, I'll come here over to the root. So the source and then middleware.ts. And then we can say const next until middleware is equal to create middleware. And we can say which locals we support. So English and Spanish, and then the default local. So like the fallback, if the user is coming in with another local that isn't either of these two or whichever you specify, then we can say fallback to English. And then for the middleware, we must export default a function, which takes in the request, which is next request and should respond with a next response. And we simply return the invocation of this middleware. So we pass in the request and it is going to use the headers for the language or the cookie that the library specifies internally. So that cookie will be used for any subsequent requests, which allows the user to change the locale if they want to. And then we can say export const config and we can say match only internationalized routes or path names and then matcher. And it's pretty much the same one that they added there, which is this one. So we can copy this whole line, paste it here. And in this case, it will be either Spanish or English. So now we can save this middleware and let's move on to the fifth one. So the locale that was matched by the middleware is available via the locale param. This means that here you would access via slash n or slash s or whichever other locale that you specify. So for that, you need to use this path route, which should actually be in the root of the application. So you can come here over to up and then say locale which means that this route will accept a path and then we can move everything under this directory. So with this, we can now use the use translations hook and we should also specify the locale here in the body. So for that, we can come here to the layout and we can say type props is equal to it takes children. So react node and the params, which is actually an object and locale will be either English or Spanish. Now you may be wondering where does this locale come from again from the middleware. So it passes them down as properties. So with this, we can change this to be const root layout, then react .fc. Then we can get rid of this type definition. And this will be an arrow function. And then we can say export default the root layout. And then we can add the props type here. So props. And we must say const messages is equal to use messages. So we import this hook from use intel. And then here in the language, it should be the one that we get. So params and then local. So local and then next Intel client provider, we pass in the messages. So these ones right here, and then we wrap all of the components. So with this, it should work. Let's try it out. If I run this and then come here, refresh, 
there is an error cannot resolve messages. And that is because messages are actually relative to this file. So with that slash, then we come here to messages and then the locale. And we should also use the base locale. And then we can come back to the layout and we should actually wrap this within the children. So with this, if I hit save and then open this up, we get a create context only works in client components. I fixed the error and that is we were importing use messages from the base library when it should be from next Intel instead. So with that change, if I save the file and then come back here, as we can see, it works as expected. So we get slash n. So now let's try internationalizing this. So how can we access our files? Well, for that, we can come here to say the product section, and then we can say const t is equal to use translations. And we import that from the library and then we can pass in a, a namespace. The problem here is this is not type safe whatsoever. So if we were to invoke T, we get no autocomplete, which makes it very error prone. So for that, what you can do is come here to the root of your whole project and create a global dot V, which is declaration dot TS file. And then we can say type messages is equal to type of import. And we come here over to the source and then to the messages and then target every single file to extract the types. And then we declare this interface, which gets all of the messages by extending from these two. So if you have more locales, you would add them here. That way you get a full type safety. So with this, we can also create an as that adjacent file, and then we can copy this, paste it here, and we can say Spanish. And for this, let us say English. And with this, if I save this and then come back here to the product section, we now get an error saying, well, this key doesn't exist. So if I hit control space, I get all of the possible keys that there are in these files. So we can get access to test, which will return a string. So with that, we can, for example, come here to this paragraph. I'll comment this out for the time being. And then we can say T and then we pass in the key test, hit save, then come back here. And as we can see, we get English. If I change it to S, we get Spanish right away. And in fact, if I inspect element and then come here over to application and then to cookies, as we can see, it said its own cookie. So next locale. And this is very important because we are able to change between different locales. And so the library will remember your choice, which is incredibly important for that user experience. No application or website should ever force a locale. You should set the locale based on where the user is. So from the browser settings, but if the user wants to change their locale, you should always give that option out. So with this, we can now go back to English and the cookie is now English. This is all handled by the middleware internally. So now let's internationalize this whole page. So what I'm going to do is come here and come here to n.json and we'll change this to product section. So this will be the component and we have this one. So we have the subheading. So subheading, I'll paste this. We have the actual title, which is going to be streamline your workflows. And we're going to have these paragraphs. So what I'm going to do instead of doing all of these manually, I'll open up cursor, which is an ID that integrates GPT-4 and I'll open up the chat. And here in the chat, I'll say, add the remaining messages to the internationalized and .json file based on the product section component. And then I can say add product section and then I can say dot TSX. 
and this is going to automatically happen to the conversation, the whole file. And then I can say this file and then n.json. And if I hit enter, it should do the work for us. So we have subheading title description, no team title, no team description. But I notice that I'm using GPT 3.5 instead of 4. So let me change that. And if I hit enter, we now get a better result. So we can copy this file and then we can paste the whole content here. But now we need the Spanish translation. So let's do the same. Translate this n.json file to Spanish in its respective s.json file. And so with this, I can open up this file. And then once this is done, I can copy the result, paste it here. And now they are synchronized. So how about we use them? I'll open up WebStorm and then we can say here if I hit control space, as we can see, we get all of the messages that we have in the JSON files. So we can access the nested ones by using the dot. So product section dot features dot database multiple. But since we know this component is only for the product section, we do not need the other messages. So for that, we can come here and specify the namespace to be that of product section. And so with this, we can come here and we can say, and let me actually see here. So subheading, and we can get rid of this. And then this will be the title or the heading. Not sure. I think it's title. And then we have the description. So T description. And we can do that with the remaining ones. And I just noticed that it did not translate this paragraph. So let's skip that for now. And actually do the array. So how can we render this array using these ones? Now there's something important with this library and pretty much any other internationalization library. And that is you cannot use arrays, which is quite the limitation. But for that, you should use objects. So key value pairs. So as we can see, we have the features push to deploy SSL certificates and then database backups. So for that, what I'm going to do is copy this array and then I'll move it down here. And then we can say T add and then features. And then this will be the instant update. So push to deploy, which is push to deploy like this. So title and then description will be description, pretty straightforward. Then SSL certificates, this will be certificates.title, same for the description, then here, and finally for this title. So now if I save this and then come back here to the browser, as we can see, everything is in English like it once were. So we have all of these featured items. But what if I change over to Spanish? Well, if I do this, as we can see, the whole text is now in Spanish and the dynamic array is also in Spanish. So as we can see, this is very powerful. We just define the JSON files and all we need to do is make sure that they are synchronized across all of your languages. Now, using cursor, what I can do is select all of these. So select this one, then add to chat. So this one add to chat, then do the same for this one. And I believe that's everything. So with these two, I can say add these last two to the end.json file. And so I now get this. So here we have adapt description and embrace description. So I can select these two, copy them, come here over to before last updated and then hit save. And with this, I can say T at adapt description. So we get that autocomplete right away. And then 
embrace description but we now need to add it to the Spanish translation so s.json and for this I believe we should be able to use GPT 3.5 instead and it's going to be much faster so translate n.json to Spanish keep the properties or the keys in English the values are the ones to be translated and with this it's still not working but I guess it's because cursor uses the current file automatically so I'll move over to this one and try again and let's see if this time it works so it seems like it did so now I can say s dot json and replace everything hit save and if I come back here as we can see in Spanish everything is now successfully translated now what about the date we still have January 5 2024 and in Spanish that's not the way a date is represented so for that again the library uses the ICU standard so if I come here to this blog post we have a short guide on how to use this standard so they have number formatting you can see that for yourself but they also have the date and time formatting so if I move to this one as we can see the syntax for date formatting is variable then comma then we specify the type so we're telling that the variable is a date and then we can pass in the format and this format if I come here we can say short, medium, long, full, and there are also these default formats. And then they have the way to do this, which is check in date, comma, date, and then medium. So let's try this out. Let's see how this works. So I'll come here to the n.json, and in last updated, we're going to pass in a variable. So this will be the date then the type will be the date or for clarity let's name this now and then we can pass in the format so we can say medium and with this we can come back here to product section and then instead of doing all of this we can get rid of this span and instead pass in the information so we can pass in the values which are those that we declared here so now so we can say now will be the new date and if I save this and then come back here it is not getting displayed because I forgot about the Spanish one so I can come here and say or just copy and paste this here and with this now the date is formatted to Spanish so that's how easy it is and you can do this for a lot of other formats so again you have the plurals so this is very nice because you can specify the variable so the one that you're gonna be passing in just like we did and then you can say plural comma and then you can say when it's one you can say one room and when it's anything else like an else so with one do that else and then number so this is the placeholder and then you pass in that one for plurals and then you can also pass in other variables and these variables again are defined here so you pass in or you declare the name and this name will correspond to the one that you pass in in this object so with the key of each property must map to each variable declared here so let's try the plural so I'll come here to n and at the top I'll just have a plural test and here what we can do is say count and then we say the type will be plural and then we can say when it's equal to zero you can say zero tasks or whatever you want so this is an if so if equals zero so the count that you passed in then use zero tasks as the actual text otherwise you can say if it's equal to one then one task and then other and then hashtag tasks so if I copy this I'll just paste it here 
in English because we're just going to be testing this. And if I save this, then here at the top, let's see where we can add that at the title. Let's also say T and then plural test. And then we can pass in the count. So again, this maps to the key. So we can say two. If I save this, come back here, we get two tasks. If I change this to one, it should say one task, singular. And if I say zero, save this, zero tasks. So as you can see, this format is really nice. So now what if you want to have the select? So English, you click on it, you can change over to German and vice versa. How can you add that to your application? Well, for that, they have this example here, which you can find in the official documentation. So if you scroll down, you'll find this example. How can I implement a local switcher? And they tell you how to do it alongside with the example implementation. So now with this wraps up the video. Thank you for watching. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.